Antonis Palacrusis is an international businessman focused on the transition to clean energy, specifically lithium. He is the third largest shareholder of Atlas Lithium, among many other interests in the lithium industry. So, Antonis, great to have you thank here. Thank you. Thank you very so much, So curious Jane. to thank hear you. about this because it's such an interesting industry. How, just to describe it overall, how is the lithium business right now? Well, the lithium mm -hmm. market and the price of lithium has gone down 80%. Mm -hmm. But... Um, What's happened is specifically in Canada and specifically in the United States, you've had in Canada $35 billion of grants. The latest has been Honda, which is building a super EV that have been incentivized to build super EV plants in Canada. Uh, Stellantis mm -hmm. received a big grant from the Canadian government to build a, a big plant in Windsor, and as did Volkswagen. So uh, there's, there's a huge supply and demand imbalance right now. And because lithium's come off 80%, the key is going to be to be able to produce lithium economically. And in Atlas Lithium, a company that I was the second largest shareholder, Mitsui of Japan has just invested $30 million, which now has made me the third largest shareholder. What we're focused on is, is, is uh, ESG lithium that's green and clean. It's a hard rock lithium in Brazil, specifically in Lithium Valley. And Atlas Lithium is next to another company that I was a very early investor in called Sigma Lithium. <laughs> so Sigma Lithium, uh, run by a CEO, Anna Cabral Gardner, has been uh, done an, an amazing job in terms of ESG and able to produce lithium at a fraction of the, the, the price today, which is she's been able to ship it at 1400 a ton, the cost her cost and our cost is going to be about four to five hundred. Atlas will be in production Q4 this year. Uh, the thirty million that came in from Mitsui is the part of a hundred and thirty million dollar financing uh, since uh, end of January last year. Atlas rang the opening bell on Nasdaq. Atlas is listed on Nasdaq on February twenty fourth and then May tenth. May tenth, the opening bell of Nasdaq was with Sigma Lithium together with the governor of Minas Gerais. Uh, Zema, and Governor Zema is very proactive in mining and sees the energy transition globally as a way of creating jobs and changing the uh, the economics mm -hmm. in Brazil. Now, do you think um, the fact that lithium went down so much is because there was so much production of lithium, but the electric vehicle infrastructure wasn't there yet? Like we know, we have we need more charging stations and things like that. Was there a mismatch there? Well, I, I think what's gonna what's happening going forward now, Jane, is that you have it's the first time uh, as an investor and the first time in my career and, and since 1992 in mining where I've seen where you've got major oil companies competing with automotive companies, competing with trading houses, competing with mining companies for one asset which is lithium. Lithium's become white gold. And, and lithium is, is, is a mineral and a product that, that's, that's necessary not only for, for vehicles, the automotive industry, yeah. but it's also key in storage of energy for solar and wind. I see. I was so, just going to yeah. ask what other uses yeah, there were for lithium. Absolutely. So. so, you know, in the past, lithium was really used in the glass industry and it was an obscure sort of industry, mm -hmm. especially the hard rock lithium. What we have in America and what we have in specifically in another project I've been an investor in called Nevada Lithium is, is Nevada really is the most mine-friendly jurisdiction in the world. You've got a governor that's very proactive. You've got a governor there uh, that has come to Canada uh, to really promote Nevada. Nevada in the past has been very rich in gold. Mm -hmm. It started a uh, company, American Barrick, and on mm -hmm. top of that, a royalty company. Um, I think it's a silver state, right? It's a silver it? yeah, state yeah. for, you know, and it has been for a long time. Yeah. But with lithium now, you have mega projects like Lithium Americas, which has just raised 200 million. Uh, they received an investment from General Motors of 650 million, and they've just gotten 2.2 billion from the Department of Energy. So the U.S. sees lithium as a very strategic mineral. And now you have the mobile Exxons and the Chevrons of the world coming into lithium as well, because uh, part of the, the lithium is you've got brine, and the brine is, 
is, is a game changer and can be a game changer. In Nevada Lithium, we've got a company that's listed in Canada. It's called Nevada Lithium. And our hope is to come and list it here mm. on the, in the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, so, nice. So, you know. Yeah. Um, so, um, lithium clearly a key to the future. Yes. And when you've got something so dependent on your economy, there's some geopolitical issues as well. How is that? You're on the front lines. I mean, how do we see that with some of our countries that you know maybe are in competition with the U.S.? Well, look, I think um, I think the U.S. is is moving forward and taking steps to offer incentives to buyers of automotive uh, mm -hmm. of cars mm -hmm. as a tax incentive, specifically for a product that's sourced in the U.S. And and I really do believe that the the lithium in the U.S. and there's a number of very important projects that uh, are getting grants and and this is why they see this as a great opportunity to create jobs and this is why the canadian government and the u.s government have given the u.s government has given four to eight billion dollar grant canadian government has granted as i said 35 billion dollars the latest been honda which they're announcing you know they've just they're going to announce a mega mega project in canada as an incentive to create the jobs, to be able to build the cars in North America, which is one of the biggest markets in the world. The, the, the Chinese have moved very quickly in tying up assets in Africa mm -hmm. and in South America. So the US, I think, can be self-sufficient mm -hmm. with projects like Nevada Lithium coming on stream. And Nevada Lithium's just drilled the best drill results they've ever had. The Bonnie Claire project's one of the top uh, two or three projects in the world and could be number one, especially with the latest drilling results. They're working on, you know, revised numbers on their PEA. And uh, and uh, and so we're very optimistic that America can be self-sufficient to be able to provide the lithium for the automotive industry here mm -hmm. in North America. Do you think this trajectory that we're seeing lithium mm -hmm. on will happen regardless of how the 2024 election Results happen. I, I really do believe so as well. Yes, I believe regardless of what happens, um, regardless whether who, whoever gets in, in in office at the White House mm -hmm. and Congress, in I mean, Congress, is, in Congress yeah, as well. Sure, what's happening? Yeah. I think mm -hmm. that EV sales and the infrastructure is not going to stop. I think the Teslas and and especially the Toyotas and the Hondas that are coming in are going to sell cars regardless whether. Mm -hmm. Democrats or Republicans are in power. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, whoever comes in has got to really move forward with the path that's been set mm -hmm. to be able to incentivize mm -hmm. people from coming, you know, from, from yeah. building these plants and creating the jobs necessary. Now, what about technologies involved in the mining process? Is there anything going on there that's making it more efficient or more environmentally friendly? Well, there's, uh, you know, the fortunate thing about, for example, Nevada Lithium, it's very ESG friendly because there's no, there's no acid, there's no sulfuric environmental issues. Mm -hmm. It's it's two and a half hours from Las Vegas. It's on power grid. It's got plenty of water. There's no issues with any plants or trees or with any birds or animals. Um, it's 1.2 size the size of Manhattan and they barely scratch the surface. I think what's happening also in Brazil, for example, with the hard rock is they're, they're figuring out ways of having it a green ESG very friendly. So I think companies that do and are able to produce environmentally with ESG standards are able to get a premium for their product. Mm. And that's what Sigma, for example, has demonstrated in being able to get $1,400 a ton for their product. It's a premium to the market. Now, the markets come off 80%. If if lithium just goes to 25 or 30,000, you know, you've got these projects uh, will become they're robust today. But you know, if if the price starts to move up, which yeah. we believe there's a big disconnect mm. between the price where it is today and where where, where the, the demand mm -hmm. going forward and being able to to not only in North America but in Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, to be able to produce the vehicles uh, and it takes time. You yeah. just can't flick a light switch and be in production or, or start right, a mine. Right, right. Any quickly. kind of commodity, right. kind of driven thing takes right. a few takes, cycles. Takes a few cycles. Sure. Um, mm. For example, Nevada Lithium is a project for 2028, 20, 2030. Mm. So it takes it takes that kind of a time mm. frame in the in the in the mine life and the cycle to be able to 
to get up to speed to be able to start to produce, yeah. to be able to build it out. Uh, for example, Atlas Lithium happened very fast. They'll be in production Q4 this year, and that's that's remarkable. Uh, they happen to have great people in the technology that that are great chemical engineers that have built many plants, and so they're able to build modular plants and start to produce very quickly. Mm. And so they've had big interest from both Chinese investors that are building the batteries for, for the Teslas in China, mm -hmm. but also from the Japanese, Mitsui of Japan. And so with and the investments from in Canada, from Honda and from the Toyotas coming into the US, they're gonna have to build the plants here for their, their cars. So yeah, yeah. the lithium, there's a big advantage to source it from the U.S. To source it locally. Absol to source it locally. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so you're clearly bullish on lithium. Very bullish. Uh, uh, I think it's a great time to be in the space because we're contrarian investors, Jane. Mm -hmm. And I think where the opportunities are is not when the, you know, the, 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 the prices are at the, the peak. But when, when things have come off, you, I think you look for great value, you look for great assets, you look for companies that really do have the cookies and ice cream in the ground with great management teams that can foresee these things going forward. Mm -hmm. that can, and, and clearly, I think uh, in Atlas Lithium, they've demonstrated that. They've been able to raise money through a very difficult time with strategic investors. Mm -hmm. And so the General Motors have invested in mm -hmm. the Lithium Americas because of the assets, because they have a great asset there. And clearly they've been able to get the money from the Department of Energy as have a number of other ones that sure. are going into production. So I'm very, we're very bullish yeah. in that sector. And the best for an average investor, the best way to take advantage of this big trend would be buying lithium related companies, stocks. Ab absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That have been, that are really undervalued right now. Okay, be a good time. Thank you so much Thank for you, coming Jane. in. Fascinating industry, you. and yes. it, it feels like the future, and um, we'll continue to watch it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks. Thank you.